thousands of people have mysteriously vanished in America's wilderness. Join us as we dive into the deep end of the unexplainable and try to piece together what happened. You are listening to Locations Unknown. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Locations Unknown. I'm your co-host, Joe Irado, and with me, as always, is a guy who once kicked down his bedroom door in our apartment because he couldn't get in, and when it came time to move out, stole a door from another roommate who already left so he wouldn't be charged a fee, Mike <laughs> Uh Wow, Joe, thank you for that uh, totally untrue introduction. Um, and uh, thank you once again to all of our... Jim Santilli. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Um, and thank you once again to all our uh, listeners for tuning in. And um, we've got a, a kind of a, a different show for you on our, our 50th show, believe it or not. Um, so this one is not following our normal format uh, where we kind of talk about uh, someone who went missing in the wilderness. We actually have a gentleman here that's um, investigating uh, a missing person. Well, a uh, she died, but things don't seem to add up from uh, Washington State. So We don't know the whole story yet. We've been holding off, yeah. so he's going to give us the timeline. But um, we will welcome Andy. Yeah, before we get to that, just oh, to, okay. sorry. Sorry. two new Patreon uh, shout-outs, uh, Becca and Samantha Anderson. Uh, only two this week because we're, we're recording less than a week ago from our, our previous episode. So Are they two separate or are they together? They're separate people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if Becca had a lot. Or like it was Becca and Samantha Anderson. No, separate people. All right. Um, well, it's our 50th. We got a bottle of Blanton's. We're pouring some whiskey for this one. And we got a special guest in the studio. This is our first, your first in-studio guest. Uh, so we'll welcome Andy. Hello, Andy. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, guys. I, I appreciate the invite. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is do a case summary like normal. And then we're going to get right into uh, the timeline with Andy. He's going to start telling us the story. We're going to let this thing free flow. So... Uh, without further ado, all right, everybody, let's gear up and get out to explore locations unknown. March 2020, Gig Harbor, Washington. Gwen Hesselquest is diagnosed with COVID-19 and goes missing. Shortly after, an obituary is posted in local paper indicating that she passed away from the illness. However, there are conflicting statements about the actual cause of her demise. Join us this week as we investigate the death of Gwen Hasselquist. So Andy, our first in-studio guest, I would say, if anything, let's start initially with what got you interested or kind of on this story in the first place. Absolutely. So first of all, honored to be uh, the first in-studio <laughs> guest and uh, 50th episode. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I made it for the Blantons today. Yes. Uh, salute. Salute. Uh, salute. <laughs> cheers. The, the Joe Rogan uh, cheers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can hear it clanking in the background. Oh, and always when you're talking, try and get like a fist length away. Make sure we get you on the mic, and you can adjust it if you need to. Okay, uh, hopefully that's better. Uh, so I am, uh, I'm an attorney by trade, uh, but I came across this story from a, an anonymous source that's uh, closer to the, the situation than I am, uh, and the facts of this, uh, this case are really intriguing. So as a pet project, I kind of uh, did some online research, looked around myself, and uh, really was amazed by what was out there in the public eye. Uh, and the fact that uh, there's really a lot of unanswered questions that are going on here. Interesting. 
So are, is it like, as far as the authorities are concerned, this case is closed or is it still kind of trailing? Uh, I, I honestly have no idea. So it, basically, uh, there's not a lot of public information about this case at all as, in terms of news stories, uh, anything out there that would, uh, I guess, uh, suggest that authority, authorities are investigating or conversely suggest that they've, uh, you know, made some sort of conclusion in the case. So if you go to Google and start Googling things, you're not going to find much right away. It kind of takes a little deeper dive into um, some social media posts, some online presence out there that uh, really starts raising the questions about what's going on. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And lucky for us, you've done that. (laughs) I've done part of it, but (laughs) uh, you're fortunate uh, and your listeners are fortunate. There's a lot of unanswered questions out there. So maybe uh, some people will have some ideas on. Oh, we love uh, speculating. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much us in trouble. That's (laughs) all we do pretty much for this entire show. So excellent. All right, so if uh, if you want, we can uh, start going into the timeline. Um, we'll just kind of ride us through what happened in that timeline, and then we'll interject with questions that we're, we're asking because we don't know much above uh, just the high level of the story. Um, and then we'll just kind of poke and prod what you know you know. Uh, we can look stuff up live, and we'll go from there. Sure, that sounds great. Um, so I think the, the natural starting place for the story is kind of where uh, the starting place for the last couple of years is. Uh, we're talking the very start of COVID-19, uh, the pandemic in the U.S. Uh, so March 2020, um, basically, you know, everything that I've found kind of starts um, that third week in March. So we're about a week after the NBA shut down. Uh, it's a week after Tom Hanks announced that he had COVID-19. And okay. you, you remember the chaos, the world's kind of going crazy. Not- oh, we were all worried about losing <laughs> Tom Hanks. <laughs> that was a big concern globally. Right, right. That's when it really hit home. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that first month was kind of, uh, you know, is this the next Black Death or, oh, yeah, it was scary. I mean, I, yeah. I remember hunkering down wondering, like, okay, holy cow, this is a real thing. Like, they're telling everyone to stay home like, globally. I've seen this in the movies, and then people, you know, the talking heads always talk about, like, the next big one. Like, oh, now it's here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It really, like, no one knew what was going on with the virus at the time. There was yeah. a lot of information out there, a lot of misinformation. You, you were kind of just guessing and figuring it out. We've really come a long way since then, but uh, it definitely was chaos back then. Um, so this, uh, the, the story mostly or does take place in Gig Harbor, Washington, which is, uh, you know, a town, uh, small town right on the Puget Sound near Seattle, Tacoma, yeah. uh, and Gwen Hasselquist, uh, is married, uh, her husband, Eric, and she has two children, uh, younger children, uh, a boy and a girl, uh, at some point in March, uh, Gwen allegedly, uh, gets diagnosed with COVID, uh, and how I know this is. It, basically a tweet from her husband, Eric, um, on March 19th, 2020, that says, uh, waiting for Gwen to come home from the hospital following COVID-19. Shit got real today. There's, yeah, she's very early on. Right. That, that's like when nobody knew how to deal with it. Nobody knew how bad it was, that type of stuff. So she's like one of the first in that area probably to get it. Yeah, I mean, it has to be early in that uh, kind of sequence of things. And, and I recall Seattle was one of the early hotbeds, right? Like we were looking and Seattle kind of had diagnosis of COVID. I think there were some nursing homes and we weren't really sure if it was a Seattle thing or if it was across the U.S. or or what the deal was. Okay. Um, so following this along chronologically, uh, her husband's, you know, keeps tweeting out some things. Uh, this is... March 19th, um, then uh, kind of um, out of nowhere on March 20th, uh, early in the morning, um, Air Castle Quest posts a video on Facebook. Um, and this video has since been removed, but it's a video of uh, Gwen uh, presumably leaving their home in Gig Harbor. Mm-hmm. And um, the video is a, a full minute long. It's like a ring video. Yeah. Um, kind of captures her from a side angle and, and, uh, her husband, Eric, posts, here's the last image I have of her. She's missing. If you see her, please help her find her way home. We are all missing her. Okay. So she's diagnosed with COVID, and then he's claiming on social media that she's disappeared. And Did, she, he posts a ring camera video of her leaving or whatever and says, this is the last time I've seen her. Right. Okay. Yep. And, uh, you know, maybe on its own, that's not too abnormal, but the video... It, 
it's difficult to describe, but it shows her kind of in an inebriated state, like basically throughout the whole minute of the video, she's uh, attempting to put a key into the lock okay. uh, to lock her door. Um, she's not, she's missing it by a lot. She's, I don't, I don't think she was even successful in locking the door. So it's a really creepy video to watch, uh, yeah. you know, from an outside perspective. Um, Anyway, her husband keeps kind of tweeting throughout the day with some updates on what's going on. And uh, basically, um, he tweets this out, the video that links to his Facebook page. Um, This is the last image I have of her. And then a couple of tweets later, still in the morning of March 2020, um, he posts a a tweet uh, with a link to an Instagram posting that says, Today I've watched the sunrise knowing that likely my love didn't get to see it. I am broken. Okay. Uh, so this whole timeline of events, you know, first online presence. Um, I'm excited for my wife to come home from the hospital. Yeah. COVID-19. Next, here's a video. This is the last video I have of her. She's missing. And then um, pretty quickly thereafter, kind of a conclusory um Likely my love didn't get to see the sunrise. Yeah. Interesting. So it went from <clears throat> she had COVID, was coming home. We have this strange video of her that shows her clearly intoxicated or, you know, something's affecting her, you know, motor skills and her ability to, you know, put a key in a door. Mm-hmm. And then he tweets out that he's basically c- concluding that she's dead or is never coming home. So that's kind of an interesting change of, uh, you know. Like he very rapidly got over finding her. Yeah. He just assume she's gone. Yeah. That, Is that it, what you're getting at? Yeah. It, it's just interesting how quickly it changed from, you know, excitement for her coming home to, well, she's gone. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it, it, I also find it interesting, you know, he's, uh, that likely my love didn't see this. So, you know, what you're asking yourself kind of what's a situation where – He's basically made up his mind on this, but, um, you know, there's questions about what she was able to witness and whatnot. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just kind of strange terminology to put out there. And, you know, I go back to if I were to wake up and this was a friend or something and you have these kind of three rapid um, within a couple hours posts, what are you thinking, you know, what's going on in this situation? Yeah. Uh, Ultimately, um, a... Obituary is posted for Gwen Hasselquist, and it's on. Um, it's available online. Um, in the obituary, it's it's a nice obituary. It's short and um, kind of kind of to the point. But it starts out saying that uh, Gwen Hasselquist, age forty five, passed away in Gig Harbor on March twentieth, twenty twenty, after being diagnosed with COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. The obituary places, you know, places her death on um, on that day, March twentieth, uh, basically the same day that, that that this video is posted. And uh, you know, if you read this, it indicates that she passed away of COVID nineteen. Yeah. Now, your anonymous source that reached out to you, who um, obviously was close to um, Gwen, seems to believe that this isn't the real case that COVID really wasn't what caused her death. Ultimately. That's so it, where we're getting to <laughs> uh, be, be patient. <laughs> yeah, okay. sorry. Slow down, Mike. Uh-huh. I, and I'm not ignoring you. I'm looking at his Instagram and Twitter right now. I'm kind of like following along in the timeline and yeah, it's like all here. And it, that is kind of and, really, and re- you have images that we're, you're going to share with us of the things you captured. So we'll, we'll put it all on Facebook and the, and the website too. So if you're listening and you're not, watching either the video portion or you want to see this stuff, go on Facebook or our website where these will be posted. Yeah, absolutely. I have some uh, some screenshots that I've taken, and, and unfortunately uh, some items have been deleted, but I was able to get at least a screenshot of the video okay. uh, that was posted so you can kind, okay. of, kind of see what's going on there. But so, uh, Mike, you had a good question about my anonymous source. Well, you know, I don't know exactly what uh, he or she was thinking, but – what we can do is go to the, the Facebook posts on this video yeah. and really kind of track what's going on. And, you know, understandably because people are commenting and, mm-hmm. you know, offering words of support. Um, so uh, while this was posted or while this was still on Facebook, there's a, an individual who um, posts a comment to the, the um, 
Facebook video and it says, so sorry for your loss. I've been following your story. Pardon me for asking, but in one post it said she died from COVID-19 and another she was found in the Puget Sound. Just wanted to clarify with all that's going on with the virus. Again, I'm so sorry for your family's loss. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, um, and we're assuming all these people commenting on the video are probably family and friends of um, Gwen and Eric. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, from the the limited online research I've done, there's not really media, there's no media around this story. Yeah. So it's not, it doesn't scream something that, uh, you know, you have a bunch of people out of the woodwork uh, coming, commenting, that sort of thing. I, it seems uh, a fair assumption that they're someone who knows the family, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the first time in the situation that, you know, being found in the Puget Sound is is mentioned um, and really doesn't align at all with, you know, the, the obituary after being nice with diagnosed with COVID-19 or anything leading up to this point. Um, so right away, you're kind of asking yourself, you know, what's going on here. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find the post where it says that, that her body was found in the Puget Sound, but apparently there was something out there. You know what I think we should try doing? Um, <clears throat> I've done this before with cases with the National Park Service is, um, filing Freedom of Information Act requests. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm almost wondering if we should try and file one with probably the medical examiner's office or the coroner or whoever is in charge of issuing, like, the, you know, a death certificate and seeing if we can, you know, maybe get this certificate to see what the actual official cause of death was. Yeah. Um, does I'm, it list I'm COVID? I'm putting in notes right now. Um that that might take some time to do, and they may deny it. A lot of the freedom information, freedom of information act requests. You say FOIA, FOIA requests <laughs> from the National Park Service. They'll either uh, they'll deny it and give some BS reason, or they'll say, "Oh, we lost the files. We don't have them." Yep, <laughs> that's sure. happened several times. Um, maybe we even um, try and file one with the police. You know that had jurisdiction. I feel like sometimes those are more readily accessible. They yeah. Keep, and they I, keep files better than the National Park Service does. Yeah. And maybe we just file a FOIA in, request in for that name and see if any case files come up yep. um, for that name. Um, so, yeah, that's something obviously we didn't have for this interview. But yep. I think, it, you know, we could do, do this and maybe down the road do a follow up if we get any kind of information out of it. Oh, Absolutely. I put it on the list of to dos <laughs> <laughs> for, for Mike because you suggested it. So. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> I absolutely think that that sounds like a great idea. I mean, at some point, there's a question here that you know what actually happened, what was the cause of death, and um, as you're going to see in a little bit, we really don't have answers to that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have um, on uh, to this comment that I just read aloud. Um, Eric uh, Gwyn's husband actually responds to it. Okay. Um, and he responds, this is Eric. She left in the night while I was sleeping after returning from an out of state business trip, flying with multiple connections from what the authorities have told me. I brought it home and she caught it. The kids and I have been isolating and there are not enough tests for us since we presented mild symptoms. Gwen had an autoimmune disease and lung disease, which made her more susceptible. That's why I was scared to go on my last trip and then canceled all work trips until stuff goes away. I took her to St. Anthony's Hospital, then brought her home Thursday. While I was sleeping, she apparently got up, took a bottle of pills, and drove our van to the Narrows, and that's it. The kids and I are feeling better and should be free to roam around soon. That's why I haven't been running around the neighborhood the last several days. Hmm, Interesting. So he's now saying that she... Middle of the night, took a bunch of pills. Maybe that's the ring video where we see her fumbling with the keys, drove to a bridge there, and then jumped off. So I'm assuming that's currently what the theory is, but it sounds like there's more weird posts. Yeah, well, so it, that that seems to be what the theory is at this time. And, you yeah. know, the there's things that kind of raise your eyebrows on this. One is, you know, the video of her uh, attempting to lock the lock the door and uh, it takes about a minute and you know unsure if she even does this but then you know allegedly she jumps in a van drives to the narrows um, 
and, you know, apparently commits suicide there after taking a bottle of pills. It's interesting, the obituary. I mean, I know obituaries don't, um, you know, sometimes if someone committed suicide, they're not necessarily going to state that in the obituary. But it does kind of feel like stating that if she really did commit suicide, that, it, you know, die, it was COVID, that seems kind of like a misrepresentation of what, well, you think she would leave a note because it's not like she if maybe she's doing that because she had COVID and this is all speculation of just hearing it. You feel like she would like uh, I, I'm going through her Twitter feed and I'm yeah. not seeing anything on her Twitter feed that's like I got COVID or I, you feel like she she seems like a very poetic person, very natural type person, like talking about eating vegan, stuff like that. You, she, she journals a lot. I was looking through just her Twitter feed time on journaling. You feel like someone like that, if they're going to go do that would be poetic about the exit. Like, I'm going to leave a note for my family that says, I love you. I've got this. Disease. And that was a scary part of the pandemic. So I could argue that that even makes sense. Like, I don't want to give it to my kids. I'm going to take a bunch of pills and go to a beautiful place and end it all. But just doing that silently into the night is, I think, what's kind of weird for did, me. Did your source ever <laughs> state that she, they suspected that she was suicidal or that could have done something like that i i have no information about okay. that i don't know um kind of her background in, in mental health situation um so you know that's that's kind of an open-ended question here i mean the way her husband phrases it it makes it sound like you know she was was suicidal after having this diagnosis of, mm-hmm. of covid but you know she had returned home from the hospital presumably was was doing better yeah um you know there's some questions there but there's a couple of other things that kind of pop up uh, that, you know, frankly, I just don't have answers to. And one is the Narrows is a bridge that connects Tacoma to Gig Harbor. It's a pretty, uh, you guys can look it up. It's It looks like a pretty major uh, bridge, uh, a lot of lanes of traffic, yeah. probably fairly busy. Um, you know, I don't know if there's, there's witnesses to her driving her van here. Um, if anyone saw her leaving. That's a huge bridge. I'm uh, looking at it right now. Yeah, it's not just like a, a little overpass. Uh, it's, you know, right, a massive bridge, a lot of traffic. Um, yeah. Seems to be a pretty public place, like even in, in the early morning hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but on top of that, we, we don't know where um, where they lived, what their address was. But, you know, if you were able to watch the video and, and follow this working, you know, theory uh, that she took a took a bottle of pills and drove the, the van to this bridge, um she was having difficulty locking her door, leaving That's the house. That's point, yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think of the Wolf of Wall Street video or that sort of thing. And, yeah. and uh, you know, how practically, how did this occur? Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, certainly possible, but there's a lot of gaps in that kind of um, uh, thought process. And then, you know, the other thing that I, I kind of get ha- hung up on is that if you're searching for this incident – there's no news articles, and, and generally, you know, if someone um, if someone drowns in a body of water, there's either an article discussing the occurrence of them, you know, falling in, um, yeah. or on the back end that a body was found in in the water. Um, there's nothing here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I know um, uh, even here in Milwaukee, the bridge that usually if there, um, unfortunately, is like a suicide, it does make the local news. Like, there will be at least oh, yeah. a, it, an it article. Does. Yeah, it always uh, does. It's, so it's prime news here. It's a, it's a big deal when somebody does something like that. And, you know, people in the community want to know about it. And up in Green Bay here in Wisconsin, there's a bridge where they, they've had so many suicides off it that they have phone numbers on the bridge for you to, like, try and call before... Um, you know, doing it, and they've got they've put in, they've installed mo- like almost like chicken nets, wire, yeah. to keep people from doing it. And well, and here's the deal: the population of Milwaukee is very big. It's a big city. Mm-hmm. Gig Harbor has a population of nine thousand eight hundred people. So if somebody commits suicide on a bridge there, that's probably the biggest story outside of what's going on with COVID at the time. Yeah, and I'm going through her Twitter feed just kind of as you're talking, listening, and she is like consistently posting about COVID all the time. I haven't found one in here where she says she got it. Which is sure. like kind of kind of crazy, right? Right. You would expect. Did, did I get ahead of myself? No, 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 okay. no. You're uh, <laughs> you're great. You're researching. No. Okay. Uh, um, but but you're spot on. It's kind of this this whole story in my mind. There's 
bits and pieces of information and really important details. And then there's gaps in information and you're, and you're right. Like she's very active on social media. They both were. Um, and the only posts we have about her having COVID is, you know, her husband, uh, when she's coming home from the hospital and she's kind of tweeting during this, um, there, you know, there's tweets over this time that she you know, would have been diagnosed with COVID or would have been in the hospital. Yeah. She's what was the day that he tweeted that again? Sorry if I'm making you go back. March 19th. March 19th, he's tweeting that she got COVID. Yes. And, I, yeah, her last tweet was March 18th. And it was just a retweet of uh, cannabis being deemed an essential business in the Bay Area. And that was it. But she was tweeting, like, several times a day up until that point. So that could also be an instance of initial, I think, people were afraid to tell people they had COVID. So Mm -hmm. I wouldn't write it off as maybe she wasn't tweeting. Maybe she got diagnosed and freaked out and just stopped tweeting. But, again, she was an active Twitter user. Right. Very active. I'm like, there's a ton of information. But her last tweet is an innocuous retweet of Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg Business on March 18th. Which March 19th is my birthday. Wow. Which is, which is really, like, literally, <laughs> this literally happened on my birthday. So it's like almost like surreal that you've come here with the story and it happened on my birthday last year. You weren't in Gig Harbor, were you? I, no. <laughs> no, I have alibi. I have an alibi. I have video of me being here in my new house. <laughs> um, but you bring up a good point on the tweets. So I, I'm looking at, at her husband's tweets, actually, and uh, on the on the 19th, he posts this tweet about uh, waiting for her to come home from the hospital. Yeah. And that's the night that she ended up going missing. But he also retweets one of her tweets from the 17th. So two days before she was in the hospital, um, that it says, another benefit of eating a plant-based diet. My husband made a trip to the grocery store and was able to find everything on the list. Animal products were out of stock, but there were plenty of vegan options on the shelves. Hashtag eat your veggies, hashtag plant power. Um, so and his, defin- his Instagram post or his Twitter post about her where it said shit got real. It links to his Instagram feed where it's a picture of his cat and his hashtag <laughs> is coronacation. Whoa. That's wild. Hmm. I don't know if that's an actual hashtag or if he just made that up, <laughs> but that's like what that link is to. All right. Anyway, sorry. I'm like, I'm deep into this now. I'm in the the rabbit hole, so keep going. (laughs) I'll try and stop interrupting too much. Oh, no, this is great. Um, (laughs) So, you know, this is kind of the, what I would consider like the first quarter of of the story here. And, you know, we have a situation that not terribly uncommon, but uncommon enough. There's conflicting stories about what happened Mm -hmm. um, and really conflicting stories from, from the family. I mean, uh, Eric's posting one thing on Facebook, the obituary, uh, which interestingly doesn't, for survival, people who uh, survive Gwen, it's her husband and her two children. It doesn't list fa- other family members out there. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if she, you know, didn't have family around, uh, but the, my presumption here is that her husband wrote this obituary for her um, and indicated that she passed away after being diagnosed with COVID, then changes the story on Facebook. Um, so we keep going through this timeline, um, and we're going to move forward to April 6, 2020, or excuse me, April 16th, 2020 for, so, you know, just under a month later. Um, and Eric, uh, posts a Instagram post of him running. Uh, apparently he's a, a big runner. He mentions in a couple times and it's on his Instagram feed, but, uh, picture of him and his son, his, his younger son, and his comment is, uh, my kids astound me every day. They are resilient and strong. We had a conversation last night where they both encouraged me to find someone to go on a date with. We had nominated Maeve Dempsey, the mother-daughter, but I think she agrees this house needs more female leadership. I feel like a person standing on one leg. If you know of a kind woman looking for an honest man, Please help me find her. No one will ever replace Gwen, but we want this family to be whole again. Feels really weird putting this out there, but praying for help. Hmm. This is a month later? A month later. Okay. (laughs) That's a little soon. Yeah, I mean, I... How long were they married? I mean, they had kids that look like they're, like, you know, they're underage. They're like 12, maybe 14. 
So they've been married for at least that long. I don't know. They have the kids before they were married. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure on that, but I think that I think that's a safe presumption that they had been <clears throat> been married for a pretty decent period of time here. They I, I know it's their kids. Um, you know, uh, maybe 12 years old. You're about right there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, in in my mind, this is one. Joe, you have kids, and yeah, um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of kids. <laughs> I, and I think of like if my, you know, if my mother were to pass away, how quickly, you know, as a, a, an adult, how quickly would I encourage my dad to go on a date with someone, uh, let alone young kids? Yeah. Or like, I can't imagine my kids thinking about that. That's what's weird. Like, I can't imagine them immediately being like, okay, go find somebody else. That would be, I think, uh, and, you know, I think kids can surprise you, but I can't imagine any of my kids even coming up with that ever to say, and, and I'd say less of, I can't imagine them being like, I don't want you to date anybody, but more like, why would that be on their mind? Like they just lost their mom four weeks ago. Right. Like, like the kids are ready to move on already. Like I can't see them ever moving. Like that's a, usually a lifelong damaging thing. A- absolutely. And like a, a traumatic death too. 100%. I mean, no matter what, whether it's COVID or suicide, um, it, unexpected, terrible circumstances, mm-hmm. Uh, just very strange that children would say this, and you know, there's maybe some uh, some expert out there in in a psychiatrist or something that knows more about the stages of grieving. Grieving, but this is kind of common sense, as that uh, you know, this seems strange, right? Sure. Um, even more strange in my mind is that, that, that um, Eric's posting this on Instagram. Uh, like it's putting it out there publicly um, for everyone to see that that his kids are encouraging him to go on a date to you know help make the family whole again. Uh, I what's what's the point of that? Sure. Um, so we're kind of in this situation, you know, shortly after he makes this post, um, looking for a woman. Um, a month, about a month after that. So fast forwards. You know, her disappearance is uh, March 19th. Her death ruled March 20th, looking for a woman April 16th. Uh, May 31st, 2020, we have um, a, a, in another error. Um, it's actually a tweet that was linked to Instagram and eventually deleted off Instagram. Um, so the tweet's kind of cut out. Um, it's not a full tweet, but it says, I am free. But I've also learned that I need a woman to serve. I have a solid house and a good piece of land, two warm and considerate kids. I'm searching for someone to spend the rest of my life with. If you are dot, 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 the the tweets cut out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So still on this quest to, you know, look, look for a woman, um, you know, need someone to serve in his life. And we're now two and a half months after, after Gwen's passing. All right, so we're going to fast forward here to okay. June 11th, 2020. So three under three months yeah. after Gwen's passing. We have another Instagram post from Eric. Um, and this one, life is full of surprises and God's blessings are endless. I'm so happy to announce that last Sunday... I married the most amazing woman, Miriam. She is as kind as she is beautiful. The kids and I adore her, and we are looking forward to spending the rest of our lives together. She has made our family complete again, and our house is filled with laughter once again. Plus, she's a runner too, and we are looking forward to logging some miles together. So, wait, so his he's, wife, mar- he's married now. He's his married. wife commits suicide, or supposedly, supposedly or dies of COVID. And within three months, he's already married. Within three months, he's already married. That's, 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 I mean, what do the kids say? Sus. <laughs> In my head, like, not knowing anything about Eric or this family, I mean, that just makes me feel like he was already seeing this woman. That's exactly what I was thinking. Before his other wife died. Uh, I mean, that's classic line. Like, Kind of dating somebody on the side, and then opportunity strikes. Get rid of your wife. 
and wait what it feels probably like an appropriate amount of time and then marry, bro, it's like really is it? Oh. it what's shocking here is while you've been doing the, the timeline, I've been trying to search for um, any kind of record of someone uh, committing suicide off that bridge. I, I was searching for, you know, bodies found in the Puget Sound. Um, I was, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm searching the uh, t- t- Tacoma Police Department's records. Um, I can't find any evidence that one of the theories, like, was it Eric that actually said that she committed suicide? It, I, it's it, it's it was, implied. So the person commenting says, I one post said her bod, body was found in the Puget Sound. Yeah. He says she took a bottle of pills, drove the van to the Narrows, and that's it. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I... So there's literally no evidence. There's no news report. No, um, I can't find anything of you know someone committing suicide or a body being found in the Puget Sound from that time period. Um, I found a, a way to request r- records from the Tacoma Police Department. So I think yeah, do that because I I was kind of looking that probably not as deep as you, but I was looking that whole time and I am not finding anything either. I, yeah. I, I nothing outside of uh, like. There's a headline that I think links to the obituary and to the memorial page that is basically written by Eric. Right. Yeah. So like, there's got to be something. Like, if you find a body, there's got to be records of that thing, and like, they do an examination or something. And there's none of that there at all. Yeah. So that's wild. Well, as you're searching, are you finding hits for you know other suicides or bodies yeah. being found? Uh, which is for me the crazy thing, right? Like, there's nothing yeah, this at all. One, and I would consider this a high profile. This was early COVID, and she's a COVID case. That's like everyone was obsessed with anybody who got COVID and died. Like That's a good that, point. those were national stories. Like random. Like I found an article of like uh, that she tweeted a couple days before she supposedly got COVID, and it was COVID comes to Gig Harbor. And some 60-year-old man had it. And that was, like, top story that day. So if she got COVID in Gig Harbor, I'm not seeing any story that's equivalent to that that says, you know, I have it too, I also live here. They're reporting all of that like crazy. Absolutely. And, I, you know, we could probably look at the cases that were in the United States at this time. But, it, you know, we're talking a couple hundred cases. This is really before it blew up, right? It yes. was kind of – we thought it was contained to, like, little pockets – um, Seattle being one of it. So, you know, it makes sense that she was diagnosed with this, but just the lack of any uh, media attention, news stories is uh, is definitely strange on, on well, every front. Right? She stops tweeting a day before he tweets that she has this COVID diagnosis and he's waiting to hear more. We don't hear anything from her ever again. There's nothing in the news about her getting COVID. The, she, he has this random video of her being unable to open a door that he since deleted, which would arguably be one of the only evidentiary things that would show where she was and what she was doing during the time where she goes dark on social media. And that's it. She's dead now. It's somewhere in the Puget Sound. And then he's married a few months later. That sounds like COVID-19 hits. I'm got the side lady. Opportunity arises where there's this killer virus that kills everybody. No one's going to question it. Time to do this and then wait a certain period of time and then remarry. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> right. So that, that's in my mind right now. So what I'm going to try and do as I listen is try and play devil's advocate to that. Because right now that's where I'm like living and I totally understand why the story came. Sure. Absolutely. And I think you're kind of hitting the nail on the head on these like theories about what's going on and why well, this and is so experts intriguing. on this. We're, 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 we've been doing this for two years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it just presents a lot of questions, right? Like not one story on whatever happened quite adds up like you can see it being reasonable you can see that being possible but there's still questions out there on any on any sort of theory that comes along and you know the timeline i keep going back to this timeline so he this announcement of his marriage is posted on june 11th of 2020 um you know less than three months after she had passed away and he says um i'm looking up the dates here June 11th was a Thursday. He says that he got married the last Sunday. So June 7th is the Sunday that, that he got married. So on. it was like three and a half weeks or, 
Or I, it, am I doing my math wrong? It, it, it's like nearly three months. So like two and oh, a half three months. months. That's, what, that's what I meant. Right? I said weeks. But if we go back to his other posting, we have this one that's since been deleted from uh, May 31st asking for help finding a woman. He's saying, um, let me pull this back up. I am free, but I've also learned that I need a woman to serve. I have a solid house and a good piece of land, two warm and considerate kids. I'm searching for someone to spend the rest of my life with. That's that's Sunday, May 31st. Sunday, June 7th, he's married. Uh, just, you know. Yeah, I'm looking up um, coronavirus deaths from March of 2020 uh, in Washington State. And on the 20th, there were only eight deaths. Wow. So like so she, and do they have the names of the people? I can't find anywhere where it's listing the names of people, but there's lots of news articles. Um, I just read one where they were talking about a seven year old woman and like an eighty three year old guy, and I just remember, in the beginning of the pandemic, like every death was getting reported, right? Especially this in this Washington, because like that like was kind of thing. where it started. Yeah, this is a weird thing about like HIPAA at the time, because normally they wouldn't share that information, but for whatever reason, this is like. They're making it public knowledge. And even if they weren't sharing information, they're being like a male in his 60s or a female in her 40s. Yeah. And that's where it's like, are you seeing of those, what, eight people you said? And she went to the hospital. So it's not like they self-diagnosed and she was at home and they weren't reporting. If she went to a hospital and she tested positive for COVID, that's on record. Yeah. And are you seeing anyone, uh, a female around her age of those eight people? No, I I mean, I'm searching for, um, you know, any kind of article or, you know, here's an article from um, King five out there and they're listing out um, between March 2nd and 8th. Um, how many deaths do they have? Um, yeah, It's like listing out the deaths by day. Um, so that's not to say necessarily that her death would have gotten news attention. I think it would have. I'm I'm on the, of the opinion that they overreported all of that, especially in the beginning. I mean, it was months we were getting overreporting of like data count because the numbers were so low. Yeah, right? it was just starting to spread. So I feel like that's the stuff that like we were overhearing about. Yeah, like searching for her name um, from this news website, nothing comes up. Obviously, we've all been searching for her name. Uh, you know, in Google. Oh, I'm on the circuit court system in Washington state right now <laughs> looking at uh, his new wife. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, absolutely. And I, I think that really is kind of at the heart of this is that, you know, her, her death um, is either due to COVID or due to apparent suicide in the Puget Sound. And there's nothing on either point. Um, and it seems strange that you're not one way or another, there's something going on, you know, that that's, that's not a zone. good way to put it. He <laughs> mentioned two forms of things that probably could have killed her. And there's no story or information on either of those two things. Right. Yeah. That's wild. That's super suspect. Um, so, uh, are the, is there any, have you found any other stuff since he married this new woman? Yeah. So a, a couple more things. I mean, yeah. and I keep going back to this timeline, but I think it hel- helps put everything in perspective. You know, we, looking at when everything happens. So he, this post of his on Instagram, June 11th, uh, what it's, he got married one week after he's publicly searching for a woman to spend the rest of his life with. And, yeah. you know, like uh, any normal person out there that you look at this and you say, Oh, you know, that was, seems kind of quick. Right. And someone actually yeah. posts on his Instagram that says, Oh, wow, that was fast. How did you meet? <laughs> um, yeah. And he responds, it was fast, but it was the right call for our family. Everyone is so happy. Uh, everyone is so happy. We met online and chatted daily for some time before meeting. Then it was love at first sight. So he's putting out his own timeline of when he met this woman, yeah. right? Uh, but a week before they were married, he's publicly posting that he's looking for someone to spend his, the rest of his life with. A month before that, he's posting pictures where he's saying that his children were asking him to find someone to spend his rest uh, the rest of his life with, you know, when did he meet her online and what does it mean by chatting daily for some time before we met? And then it was love at first sight. I mean, 
Did this happen over the course of a week? <laughs> yeah, right. that's, yeah, some time, and you're three months, like, okay, you're, you're, like, was it a month or two? Because if they've been chatting for some time, it's before his wife died. Or, the, uh, that's a good point, like, what is some time? Is it a month? That's not some time to me. That's, <laughs> I just met you. Mm-hmm. Is it intentionally ambiguous? Is there, you know, we, the timeline on this is just intriguing to me. Uh, but so we keep moving a couple, uh, the next day he posts a, an, another photo from his wedding and um, it, it says, uh, my bride, wonderful kids and super awesome Kenyan mother-in-law here in America. So much love right here. Hashtag this is love. Hashtag blessed beyond measure. Now, this is June of 2020. Yeah. His Kenyan mother-in-law is here in America for their wedding. Uh, you know, we hit, we had restricted flights at this time. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not clear, you know, when she... Yeah, was she here already or... Right. Yeah. That Yeah, okay. that is interesting. She. I mean, I'm assuming the mother-in-law had been here for a while if, like you said, the flights were starting to get restricted. But that's that a time. weird way to put it. My Kenyan mother-in-law. So, like, if she's already here and then flights are restricted, is she staying here because she was here ahead of time? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Just It could be nothing, but it's, like, <laughs> why do you mention, like, her origin unless she... Like, if she's from America, you don't say that. Yeah. If she's an American, you don't say it. But if you say, my Kenyan mother-in-law, okay, did she come here for the wedding? Mm-hmm. And it's, like, there's a lot of planning that goes into fly from Africa, especially during a pandemic when things are getting locked down. Yeah. And I remember when that lockdown happened and how serious it was because Cassie was supposed to go to Europe for a work trip and she was in a layover in Michigan and I saw the president come on and say, we're locking down travel. And I called her and I said, do not get on the plane. You are not leaving me here with six kids during a pandemic because I, <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to come back here and I'll be stuck with all these kids at home and I will probably lose my mind. So she was either already here or somehow got here, but I don't know. That That's... that's it's weird. Yeah. It, it, and at this point, it, in my mind, it was starting to get to these things that, like, one, one um, you know, vague statement or one kind of weird post easily explained, here's what happened. But we're starting to thread these together. And it, from the start of this timeline to four months later, three months later, it's very unclear what happened. And, you know, I'm kind of at a point today that, like, I'm less clear than I was you know, looking at this the first time I heard it, I really have no idea. Yeah. Well, and so people close to this couple originally reach out to you. So, I mean, there's some uneasy feeling in here and, uh, and going through some of these Instagram posts and seeing the people responding to his posts when she's missing, like you can see friends and family are being very supportive. Then all of a sudden this wedding thing happens and it kind of goes blank and people are leaving just real kind of like innocuous, like, Oh, beautiful. Like, like, Holy, like this does not seem right. So I can see why they reached out to you initially to figure out like what's going on here and where the interest in this case came from. Yeah. And I, you do see this throughout the comments. I mean, it starts with the the video that he posts and it's kind of a qu- question we had. I, you know, I heard she was found in the Puget sound, but I also heard it was COVID. Yeah. We don't know what's going on with the virus. We all know, know that feeling, right? Um, can you explain our confusion, but it keeps going, you know, wow, that was fast. Um, uh, How'd you meet her? We've been talking for some time. What's some time? You know, how how did your Kenyan mother in law get here for a wedding um, in in the in the height of COVID? Yeah, uh, I mean, I think the questions I have are, um, what happened on the twentieth? We have the video. We have video of her highly intoxicated, trying to get a key in the door. We have conflicting statements from. We have the obituary that says she died of COVID-19. We have conf- you know, comments saying that they found her in the Puget Sound. There's no news or anything on that. We can't find any evidence of a suicide around that time. And based on all the other COVID deaths in that area, the news media was reporting all of these like as they were happening because there were so few of them in Washington. It was kind of like the, the epicenter of the wave of COVID, that first big wave. And there's no, there's no articles on her uh, passing from COVID, um, and the, you know, and then the fact that he, you know, 
it could just be coincidental. I mean, but it all seems really quick to just move on that fast. I think that video of her being intoxicated really sit, sits with me the wrong way. Well, why does it seem like any time there's a post that someone questions something, the post disappeared? Yeah, that's a good point, That's right? kind of like what I'm reading into it is like the posts that were deleted seem to be the posts where you had screenshots taken before they were deleted where people are kind of like, hey, I heard, like, explain this for a second and then post gone. <laughs> right. You might respond to it and then all of a sudden just, you know, it's, it's just wiped from the internet. Right. And I, I look at this as kind of two different posts. There's one, right, you're, you're totally correct that there's questions that are presented and the posts are deleted and also kind of the timing on things. So the post on May... 31st that uh, searching for someone to spend the rest of my life with is deleted. Well, he got married a week later. We know this, right? Yeah. Uh, the post from April, uh, a month earlier, that um, his kids were encouraging him to find someone to go on a date with is it's still up there today, right? And so, you know, on the timeline of what, what should still be out there, what should be deleted, it's not, we don't have a situation where everything in the past is getting cleared. I'm deleting all my posts. Yeah, you know, or like making everything private. Or that, right? Um, but it's selective. It's selective deletion from, you know, f- from the internet. And, you know, these posts are still out there. You can't delete anything from from Facebook, right? It's just we can't see yeah, it. Yeah, we can't see it. So it's somewhere in the now metaverse or whatever it's called. So I, I want to play this. I'm going to see if I can get in the thing. Uh, it's an Instagram post, and it's he posted it June 19th. So that's exactly three months to the day of... He's posting a video from his wedding. I'm going to play this real quick. Let's see if I can get the audio in here. You guys can go on Instagram and see it yourself. But hey, Eric. Take you, Miriam. Take you, Miriam. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Through all the experiences of life. Through all the experiences of life. I, Miriam. I, Miriam. Take you, Eric. Take you, Eric. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. To love and to cherish. To love and cherish. Through all the experiences of life. Through all the experiences of life. I, Eric. I, so Eric. It's just repeating now. Take you, Miriam. So. I don't know. I, I that seems too soon to be that happy about in that scenario. Um, I don't. I don't know. I. I mean, I'm gonna try and play the other side. All right. I'm gonna try and think about this completely on the nose. Maybe you're married to somebody for so long. She comes down with COVID, passes away, and he's kind of losing his mind a little bit. Maybe meet somebody online. Based on her accent, if I seem like they're, they're obviously saying Kenyan mother-in-law. She sounds like she's from Kenya. Was she living in Washington? Did he meet her online? Is it like a mail order thing? And just saying like, okay, maybe nothing's wrong. Was he freaking out? Did this whole mail order thing to try and fill this hole in his life and, you know, just made this quick rush to judgment and, and maybe he really is in love with her. Maybe the kids really like her and this is just a weird scenario. It doesn't feel like that, and I don't know how many of those stories actually turn out that way, and that's what my holdup is on here. This is three months later to the day that he's posting a video of his wedding vows with this other woman, and his poor kids are there, and they're probably like, they're still got to be grieving the death of their mother. Right. Not knowing what's going on, and all of a sudden your dad's like marrying this other woman and just moving on immediately. That just seems really, really suspect to me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, uh, accuse him of anything because we don't know um as far as we're concerned she died of covid um i definitely think we should try and get you know coroner's report for police records on that name i want to see if there's like a toxicology report done on her there's something i don't know what is uh allowed to be made public um yeah, so. I mean, I think, uh, and, and I've kind of thought through this. Obviously, we don't we don't have anything here today, and I think the the FOIA requests are up the right alley. But the question here is, you know, is this an ongoing investigation, and are you going to run into that roadblock with um, with the police department, or is this a, a closed case? And I think either avenue that that you look at that 
there's answers out there to this. And, you know, where Joe kind of playing devil's advocate to himself, it, it makes sense. But when, when you do that, it's all in segments. And you can, like, this would make sense, this scenario. Where, you know, it's it's all speculation. But yeah. when you get more information here, there's, there's answers to what exactly happened and can kind of connect these dots. As it exists right now, it's the, the unanswered questions that are the most intriguing because – it is kind of a rare situation, and it just doesn't quite completely add up. And, I mean, you wanted to come on here to talk about this because, obviously, an anonymous person close to Gwen reached out to you that things To be fair, added. I coaxed him onto this because he told me the story. <laughs> I was like, will you come on our show and tell this story? Because this is really interesting, and it's very clearly being swept on the rug. And the reality is um, there's always the instance where it's legit and we could be potentially opening up old wounds. But there's also the aspect of if there's some foul play here, it's being ignored. And that's really an injustice. So I think it's like, okay, if, if it's legit, where is all the information we need? Where are those those holes that Andy is saying are missing? Like, that should be all readily available and made accessible and be like, yep, here's here's toxicology report on the body. Here's exactly what happened. Here's this, this, and the other. Yep, she did visit the hospital. Here's the report from the hospital that said she was here and had COVID. That's the stuff that's missing that's pretty damn important. Yeah. And... At the time, like I said, if before COVID, if someone went to the hospital and was diagnosed with something, they're not going to share that information. In the beginning of the pandemic, when only like a handful of people in the whole country have been confirmed with it, we have a confirmed case that's not reported at all, and there's no information in the back. That is highly suspect. I like I remember sitting at home and learning about every single person that got COVID for like a month and a half. Yeah. And I remember it because it was my birthday and I was supposed to be having fun on my birthday <laughs> and we were stuck inside not doing anything and just bombarded with, here's the case count. Here's the case count. Here's the case count. Here's the case count. Here's all the stories. And in a small town like that, where when I searched it, I can only find story of like a 60 year old man that got COVID like a day before she supposedly got it. Yeah. That is just, it's wild. Well, I think, and, and he's saying he brought it home. How yeah. come he didn't have COVID? Yeah. Well, I think this is going to be kind of maybe an ongoing story that we well, kind is of that is yeah. that the end of well, your timeline? Yeah. So that's that's pretty much the end. Be, I have a little bit more, but before I move on to that, I mean, I think you're you're spot on on this. Like, I, mean, I I'm a lawyer by trade, but I wasn't hired to investigate this. I like got intrigued and did some digging, like like you guys just did while we're here, and. It, the questions are fascinating and there's definitely some like formal investigation that needs to be done or should be done to yeah. answer these. But it's also these, these questions that I, I think it, I consider them informal questions that could be a listener out there. could be someone in this small town that yes, I know, you know, Gwen had COVID. I'm a, a nurse at the hospital. I saw her there. Um, yes. I saw her driving the van that night or my ring doorbell caught this, right? You know, with the, the technology out there, um, there's things, there's gaps that can be there pieced be together. Yeah, transportation she, she video drove of her from van on the bridge. Yeah, from her house right. to the bridge, or even if there's like, but like any investigation, like did she pass by? If she would have had to pass this store, and they have a security camera outside, like different types of things that, especially nowadays, even in a small town, you're going to have potential video catching, you know, her driving the van, or you know, would you see a video of him driving the van and her in the passenger seat, or what? Yeah, no, I think this is going to be maybe an ongoing kind of case maybe we check in like once every six months with um well hold on we gave our theories what what i kind of think i know your theory but (laughs) give give us your you've been more in depth like all the information i have now is what i just looked at while you were talking yeah i never heard about this before yes you told me a little bit and i remember when we were out we were out in chicago for a work event and you started telling me and i was like okay stop just stop i literally told him i was like stop telling me because you're gonna tell me on the air I want to. I want to hear this raw. Um, so, like, that, I heard most of the story now. Um, but what is your opinion of this the whole thing? Yeah. So it, it's honestly, I'm going to be very disappointing here if you have some um, <laughs> some boo uh, nope, noise. Nope. I I, uh, uh, I do have a. Oh no! I'll I'll, I'll hit it if it's, if it's appropriate. <laughs> no, I I I don't. I honestly don't have a theory. I mean, I'm coming at this from a like a logical standpoint, and my. Where I'm at is there's way too many questions out here on, on what happened for me to be comfortable believing any story, any possible route this could go down. And, you know, really, there needs to be answers to these questions. And through my mind, you think through all these scenarios we discussed today. It's what 
answer to those questions would tie up and make this all seem to make sense. And I, I don't know what that is, right? So you're just, are you def, are you're a defense attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I just know. <laughs> you're just a good attorney. You want more information. <laughs> no. Um, no, I would agree with that. So I'm speculating. So you, you don't have like a gut that you're just willing to share. I'm going to try and dig out of you. Like I, I, I hear the, the logical side of you saying, I don't want to give an opinion because there's missing details. And it could like, I think the Hollywood side of the people in the previous stories, like for myself is like, oh, it's clear he fell in love with this woman and found a way to get rid of his wife. That's how it looks like to me 100%. But there are those very important missing gaps where why I was trying to play devil's advocate was grieving husband and people grieve differently. Some people kind of lose it. Maybe he lost it. And this is him acting out in a way that's un- unnatural. Right. And I, honestly, I'm just, I can't get there because I don't know this person. <laughs> you know, crickets. No booze. <laughs> uh, crickets. Uh, you know, I don't know this person. I haven't interviewed him. I can't like even get a read on the situation. What, okay. what we have here is I have what you have right now. We're all in the same boat. Um, and it's posts that are made by him. They're out there in the public and you read into it whichever way you want to read into it. But until, you know, until you really peel back one more layer, I think it's an unsolved mystery in my mind at this point. Right. Well, I think one thing that can help is a, we're going to try and get these FOIA requests out. But if, you know, we do have quite a large following now. So if enough people get interested in this, I know we have listeners in Washington state, there might be people in the area. They might have connections with people. I think this would definitely be a good ongoing thing to see as we're requesting FOIA information, bring you back, Andy, and try and get updates as we go to see what's going on. Maybe Eric wants to come on and talk to us. Um, that would be great. Yeah. To have, to have him come and explain things. Um, or even if we could look, you know, I guess just see a death certificate. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like get the coroner's report. Like yeah. if they're like, yeah, we, we found the body and it, they had a ton of these medications, like uh, a high toxicology report showing that the medications they took were of a lethal dose. And there's a camera of her driving a van by herself in the direction of this bridge. And, and that, it's was not her, like that was her poetic way of going out. Maybe she was too afraid of COVID and wanted to like choose her own way of going out. And it's not like we are making anything up or like, I mean, all of this stuff was publicly posted on social media that wasn't behind like a privacy wall. It right. was yes. You public. can go look at this live. I went on well, right now. Some of the stuff talking. that was deleted, but so like nothing that we said right tonight was stuff that was like, for the family only. This is all stuff that he publicly posted. Mm-hmm. And we're just saying that in totality, all of these facts just don't add up with the comments and the timeline of what he's been doing after. And obviously there's people close to that were close to her that have, you know, concerns that, you know, something more than COVID went on. Right. And then all of the new, you know, the lack of information in the media about a suicide or a body in the Puget Sound or a COVID death. Um, that for, for such a small town. At that time. 9,000 people live there. Yeah, like I said, I That's looked it up. That's a town where everyone kind of knows everybody. There I were mean, only eight deaths in all of Washington State that day. So that, I mean, I'm assuming there was only one in Gig Harbor if she died from COVID that day. You would think that would show up in a local newspaper at that, that right. time. People, they don't report it now because. Well, especially if t- the know, death was later. a suicide of a COVID patient. Like right. that's like, is say what you want about the media, but that's an intriguing news story. That will get, that's a flashy headline that gets clicks. And that's what media cares about is getting those clicks. That's a headline. And it was, there's nothing there. That's a major gap for me. Not only that, it, in statistically women commit suicide at a very, uh, severe less or lesser scale than men do right Mm -hmm. so you're kind of looking at this situation covid's new um did she commit suicide because she was diagnosed with covid that in itself is a news story but then it's a female suicide as well um you know definitely kind of off of that bridge which is a big bridge which i think uh would make the news right definitely make the news yeah and then why would you did he say something about pills? He did. In in the response to the video, um, he said that she took a bottle of pills, drove the van to the Narrows, and that's it. So that's so he that's, said that. That's two methods of committing suicide. Yep. Like, because the pills would do the job. 
So how many people have done that? Like basically took two methods of which trying to complete the act. I, I, I don't know this. This is me speculating, not knowing anything, but I'm like, okay, either you OD on pills and then you're in the bathroom or in your bed, but like who ODs on pills then goes and jumps off a bridge. Right. That's where, again, I, this could be like Hollywood skewing my opinion, but it's like, okay, does he get her to take all these pills and then he goes and pushes her off a bridge? And I don't know. That That's pure speculation. Right. I got nothing, but he knew that he took all these pills and knew that he drove that and that knew that she drove that way. Right, right. And so I, and I do have one more book in kind of oh, posting yeah. here yes. before we <laughs> before we wrap it up, which, you know, I, I don't know how tied this is to it, but it goes to the narrative of, of what's going on. Um, once again, Instagram post by Eric. This is March 25th of this year, um, so six months ago. Uh, and it's a picture of him and his wife with their masks on, I think, on an airplane. Looks like they're on an airplane. And the caption says, Today I leave this shithole country to be with my wife. Fuck the U.S. Not coming back anytime soon. So he's not in the country anymore. I don't know. Wow. And, like, he's not with his kids? Well, there is there is one person who comments, Who are your kids staying with while you're gone? You know, there's no response to that question, but. Uh, it's, wow. And it looks like um, that was an Instagram post. It, uh, yes, an Instagram okay. post, March 25th. When were the last posts that he made on all the social media? I see on Twitter, uh, it looks like May 7th. He's been relatively active on Instagram, I think, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm seeing Taylor leave this shit old country with my wife. Not coming back to where you headed off to, amen, brother. So somebody wrote Why was she not allowed back? Are you taking your kids with you? Okay, so his wife wasn't a citizen. I'm guessing from that comment. That's what it seems that, to indicate. Yeah. And I think there were some posts out there that issues with um, him traveling or her traveling that were brought up and, you know, now are, aren't public anymore. Uh, so there might have been a, a story that kind of fell through the ether here with, mm-hmm. you know, deletions and things. That's that's wild. Yeah, that that is even more suspect. That he's that, that, well, that just makes me think that this woman he met convinced him to do this again. This is speculation. This is, and it seems like this story happens all the time. And this is why I'm speculating it. He meets this lady online, falls in love with her. She convinces him to get rid of his wife so she can be married to him. My guess is either be a U.S. citizen or whatever, but for, for whatever reason, he's saying he's getting out of Dodge and. Looks like he apparently may have left his kids behind. That's pretty messed up. Well, that's messed up even if he didn't kill your wife to do that thing. But so that tells me if that he abandoned his kids is what it looks like. Well, it appears it, that way. And the type like I could never do that. Like I could right. never do that. So the type of person who's capable of doing that, I would say is capable of doing other horrific things potentially. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if it's clear that he abandoned his kids. It's just, He's saying he's leaving the country and never coming back. You know, open question if his kids are with him. But, you know, either way, we're talking about, you know, you said, Joe, you think, you know, 12, 10 years old. Like, the pictures of them, they're young kids. They're in school. They yeah. grew up in Gig Harbor, around Gig Harbor. And, um, you know, don't know where he's going, where he's heading to. But uh, it's uprooting a life one way or another. Or yeah. Two lives. Yeah, there's three people commenting on the kids. Is Mary B the mob? Where are your kids? The next one, was she not allowed back? Are you taking your kids? And what you mentioned, who are your kids staying with while you're gone? And they're all private accounts, like small followers. So I feel like those are people who would be close to him that probably know more about what's going on. Sure. And you had an interesting point earlier about the kind of the level of discourse in these posts. Um, you know, it starts with like, I'm looking for some clarification because this is confusing. Uh, and then it, it clearly gets a little more ch- challenging on what's going on. Mm-hmm. This was fast. Uh, how'd you meet her? Um, where are the kids? Where are the kids? 
where are the kids, you know. So you really don't have an opinion outside of you don't know. Uh, no <laughs> opinion. He's a lawyer. You're, just, you're, just, you're, <laughs> a, you're a good lawyer. <laughs> but I do agree, you guys, I think you hit the nail on the head that, like, really there's a lot of holes here, and one or two pieces of evidence on their own might just bring this story together, right? It might not take much. It doesn't need to be, you know, a lot of facts out there. But one Yeah, or two I mean, things. if, like, the official cause of death on a death certificate says COVID-19, I think it's safe to assume that, yeah, she died of COVID. Yep. Um, but if we somehow get a police report saying that the police responded to a he suicide. He said it was a suicide. He posted suicide. Yeah, he posted suicide and taking, you know, basically trying to kill yourself with pills, too. So if the official cause of death comes back as COVID-19, why would that not be mentioned? I, I know you're speculating, but I'm just, I'm like, that's, I want to fill that gap to find out, like, what does the official report say? And I know they, like, over-mentioned COVID a lot of times at that yeah. period of time. But still, like, someone jumps off a bridge or ODs, like, they'll say official cause of death, like, COVID, and, like, they put with COVID on a lot of stuff. I think the first thing we got to do is contact the Tacoma Police Department and maybe not even file a f- FIA request yet. Yeah, just, just straight up call just someone and be email like, hey. them or call them and be like, hey, we're... Uh, you know, f- amateur investigatory journalists are now <laughs> people, on this case. If you want us to stop close to the family, uh, you know, have reached out and, or the lady that died and they have some concerns about your her final, your cause of death. Do you have any records of an interaction with your police department, her in March of 2020, you know, like, and if they say we can't look that up, like, all right, well, can we file a, a FOIA request? Or did the husband up? file a missing persons report? Because he initially said she's missing. Is there a 911 call where he calls to report her, like, my wife just took a bunch of pills and is heading to the bridge? You know, like, that would be a record that is kept. Or, like, my wife went missing. She just recently got diagnosed with COVID-19. I the think hospital, she took a bunch of pills versus he just went from there to, like, oh, she committed suicide the hospital in, what, three days? Have... Three days, was it? You, I, it's not even days. that, right? It was a quick turnaround. The she hospital from, should have a record of her checking in and checking out. Yeah, I don't know if they'd be able to share that, but I mean, yeah, I don't I know. know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I I've think never, that, that, that's a HIPAA thing. I think personal. Yeah, I think you would need a, a subpoena from law enforcement here. But so I'd be I, interested I, in if the law enforcement did get that. Subpoena. Well, that's a question, right? So I, it, right, I go back to you know what's going on here, and it's it's me. And other people interested in what's happening, looking at social media posts. But is this a close case? Is it has it been decided? And if so, you know why is it a close case? Mm-hmm. Maybe there's maybe a very clear answer to that. Or is it an open case? And you know where are we at after a year and a half of well, investigation? Well, the other thing we know about COVID is it's not something that she supposedly got at what the nineteenth. Is that? That's when the, he posted that he was waiting for her to come home from the hospital. And we know she came home that day. So she must have gotten it before, you know, at least symptoms before to be in the hospital. But it's something that... But he's saying she went... That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm I'm in my head. This hospital visit never occurred. Yeah. He's... Twe- like, the only record we have of her going to the hospital because she got COVID is him saying it and him telling us that's what happened. But as far as... Again, like I said, normally hospital visits wouldn't be publicized. They were being publicized wildly because they were reporting to public record COVID positive COVID cases. So if she got a positive COVID case at a hospital, it's not reported. And the thing I'm thinking about too about say she did go to the hospital and they let her out, I, I've a lot of people I know and um, just stories of um, people going to the hospital for COVID. Um, if you're healthy enough for them to release you. You're not like on death's door from COVID. You're not going to die in the next 24 hours. They usually, if you're positive, you go to the hospital. This is from what I've read from a lot of cases of people going to the hospital. If you're like a mild to moderate case, it, at that time, they sent you back home. And like, just monitor your symptoms. If things get worse, come back. Right. Like, from what I've read, it, it usually those people for the most part would get, would be fine. And the ones that got sick, you know, more sick, it wasn't like 24 hours later. It was like a a few days to a week later. Yep. So we're saying she had COVID and 
she had must have mild to moderate symptoms, not bad enough to keep her at the hospital. They sent her home, and then we're saying within 24 hours of that, she died from COVID. I understand she had an autoimmune disorder. Yep. So she had some comorbidities. Yeah, and early COVID, before they knew any treatment at all, that would totally... I mean, to be honest, she would have stayed at the hospital and they probably would have put it on her ventilator. They right. were not sending people home with COVID. Well, this is, er, you're right. It's early phases. So this is before the hospitals were like overrun. This is before there was a bed issue, right? Like even at this time in, in Washington, I don't think the cases were so high that hospitals were, you know, turning people down with mild symptoms. Like it, it it's strange that she would have been released came home and then passed away from COVID. I mean, I think it, it points could, to, yeah, well, to it that could. point. And that just hit me now. Like the reason they did ventilators is because they knew it was airborne and they were of the opinion that it's going to kill like most of the people that come in contact with it. Mm-hmm. The reason they did ventilators is because it's a closed loop system to ventilate. It's like yeah. not allowing air. So like the idea that early phase COVID when they're the most freaked out about it, they're just going to outpatient somebody that's positive with it when there's only a few cases that's not accurate. Like, or, or that hospital's terrible. I know we found out now, like, ventilators probably killed more people than it than it helped. But like at that time, that was like the saving cure, and that's what they were and, doing. And I mean, say the off chance that they did release her, that must have meant her symptoms were mild enough that they didn't feel that she needed to be in the hospital. But that's what I'm saying. They Which then, why but, would you die? But that, would you die? You're thinking of COVID later? now. Yeah, COVID back then. If you got COVID, it was like. Like, red alert, red alert for everyone. That's why they were reporting, like, individual cases like crazy. It was like they looked at it like the Black Plague, because we all did. Yeah. That's what we thought it was going to, if you got it, it was a death sentence. So the fact that he's like, she got COVID, eh, she's coming home, and she has all these autoimmune issues, meaning she wouldn't have had mild COVID. Especially she had a breathe. what was it, breathing autoimmune issue? Like, right. this is a breathing issue. Like, the reason COVID so it attacks people that are, like, asthmatic or whatever, like, yeah. way worse so the fact that he's like, ah, she's coming home now, that's super. It didn't really hit me till now until you guys started, were talking about it. It seems like she was getting better, right? Maybe she had COVID and she was coming home. And yeah. It, it was progressing or had but that's reached off a of point his where. Tweet. Well, like, that's off of his tweet. Right. I'm like being stubborn on this. I'm yep. like, I, I think the whole COVID hospital thing is fake. I do. I think it's BS. Well, that's my opinion. I think, <laughs> I think in the coming months, we will try and file, you know, different requests to get information. I, f- I feel like the fact that she's now deceased might, if they do have any police reports on her, the, that information should be publicly released. I, I, I don't know. You're the attorney, but I feel like if, unless it's an active investigation or, you know, then they wouldn't release the, the report. But the fact if it, there's no case and, you know, like they found her body in the Puget Sound. She's dead, buried. Like that report should be released. Yeah, I mean, I I tend to agree with that, and I think you, you guys had mentioned earlier the park system giving you runarounds on FOIA requests, but you can glean a lot of information from that. Like even a denied FOIA request for a particular reason. I've right? gotten some where half of it's blacked out. Sure. Yep. And you can still get a lot of information out of those requests. Sure. Um just by kind of piecing together what they did or did it, not do. Yeah, right? and yeah. it's it's always funny to see redacted reports from the park service. Like what are, <laughs> I know they they redact stuff to hide like identity like all Bigfoot people, stuff. They're hiding the existence but, of Bigfoot. Yeah, I mean <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, this I never heard of this before. I think uh it's an interesting case to kind of just keep I feel like a early covid case suicide in the state that was one of the hottest states in the early thing would have made national news if it was a real if not COVID. national definitely local oh because there, there are other be... stories of people getting covid at the time around gig harbor yeah the the lack of information and the lack of interest in this story which seems like a pretty big story at given the time fl- frame it was in is i think what's alerting me and very alarming yeah i don't know i, mean, I I have no, you know, theory other than I, I think don't. Andy's got a theory, and he's just really good. You're a really good lawyer. <laughs> we'll we'll talk to him off air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we have to do another one. We gotta we gotta see what information we either can or can't get. And if they don't give us information, we're gonna tell them we're going on the air and telling people we didn't get information. <laughs> then maybe that'll they'll make them give us. Some and stuff. anyone listening that might may have known her or knows the family or knows the area. 
or maybe remembers hearing about a suicide that yes. during March 20th. Or um, if your contacts like here and are willing to come on, like, that we can yep. call them in. They can be anonymous if they want, and they just want to give their opinions. This, I think that that uh, that would be worth another. This show first sure. episode was just kind of like laying the groundwork for this. I think this will be an interesting case to carry on over the next six, twelve, however long you know. Until we, until we yep. solve it. Until we solve it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this was kind of the groundwork episode where we talked to you about you know some of the basic facts from public posts, and I think we've got some homework to do now. Yes. I think we need to reach out to, I don't know if Gig Harbor has a police department or if it's all. It looked like that county, like that county sheriff's department, nine, nine, town of 9,000. You feel like there's at least one or two guys. Might be, sure. t- might be part of Tacoma's Oops. police department. There might be a county. I mean, I think we hit up all the different law enforcement agencies. Well, out that's there. Where, was it like small town department, not knocking them, but like, then they're like, yep, this is a suicide. And like no investigation, no nothing like, like. Could have been pushed off a bridge. And I'm just saying, like, hey, if, she had COVID. She if took she a bunch jumped of off the bridge and they found her body in the Puget Sound, there is a police report of that event. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, what I'm getting at is even if that's the case and like, oh, yep, there's her body at the bottom of the bridge. It's clear she jumped. They didn't look into it. Like, I feel like there has to be a deeper investigation. Even if that, even if they come up with the request and say, yep, here's a coroner's report. She had pills in her system, and well, here's the body at the bottom. I like. Idea. I wouldn't be satisfied with that. That to me would just confirm the things we kind of already know. Washington State Department of Transportation probably has cameras all over that bridge. Why don't we file a FOIA request to get the video footage from that night? I think that's a great idea, right? I mean, if, see if there's a, a van approaching the yeah. bridge, right? Like see that would answer a lots see of questions. It's got an angle of somebody jumping from the bridge, right? It may not, but. Right. Do um, all do all bridges have cameras? Like big yeah. bridges? Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, this is a uh, large bridge. There's a lot that. <laughs> there's a lot of cameras out there, and even like on highways, you know. See, I would have the, thought of that, like on the way there, but I didn't know if they're like. Mon- I guess maybe that's like big a bridges federal, all have, like a federal. Thing. Well, it's not. I, I looked on you know on a map. It's not like a, a freeway. But I think it's a state highway, but a bridge of that size is going to have cameras all over Certainly. because they use those cameras to see if there's accidents. They can see you know, what's going on if they need to send people out there to clean something up. So there's definitely, I don't know how long they keep footage for. They may right. delete it after a certain... Oh, that'd be terrible. Unless there was a suicide, they may keep footage from days that have police activity. I don't know. This is all things we should probably reach. There's another thing we, we need to put, you know, on the list of things to do. Reach out to someone in their Department of Transportation. Just start the process yeah. of... Who do we contact to try and get video footage from this date? Is right. it even available? Well, you know, I think that one way or another, <laughs> digging up these, doing these FOIA requests are going to show you something, right? So even let's say they purge the video footage from the bridge and you, they, you get that in response to the FOIA request. Does the police uh, record show that they ever looked at this yeah. uh, footage, yeah. right? Like, did we even cross this off the list? Was there a 911 and, call from her husband to the police saying, my wife just took a bunch of pills is driving to the bridge? Yeah. Right. Yes or no? If it's yes, we've got... An answer, we're moving in. An into, answer, we're moving towards, you know, it was suicide. If and no... Think, and those calls are public record. Any 911 call is saved. Yep. Yeah, so that's public record. We should be able to file a request with her name and his name, and they should be able to search the records and see if there's a 911 call, especially during that you know short time period. Absolutely. If there's no 911 call, I think that raises more questions. If there is a 911 call, I think I have less questions. <laughs> and I, I, I want to hear the call. I, yeah, I, I think, I, I, I'm, I'm going to need substantial evidence that he didn't do this. Well, we still don't know. It's COVID at this point. Yeah, according to him. Yeah, that's that's okay. It's it's his word against his my word, opinion. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sure this episode is going to ruffle a lot of a lot of feathers with uh, people. Um, and one in one thing, Joe, that, that you mentioned that I want to circle back to is this, you know, um, who's looking into this? What are people doing? And, you know, in, in life, in any situation you come into trouble with the law, medical situations, you really need like an advocate out there questioning what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and things slip through the cracks with your doctor. If you don't have an advocate, they slip through the cracks. Um, if there's no one 
asking for answers, right? And I keep going back to the obituary, and it, it says that she was survived by her husband and children, and I don't see any other family listed. I don't know what this means. The We've talked a little bit about the, uh, the source that contacted me, and, you know, she's – he and she, he or she are not close with the family. It's not like one of those situations. They're just closer to the situation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so really you guys might be the advocates here, right? Asking the questions that need answering. And I think, I think you have you're to reach. The advocate. Well, <laughs> we're, we're just the medium. We're the, sure. we're the medium for which sure. the message is delivered. But I mean, that's a good point. You have somebody who's just close to them, not even family member that's asking questions, which if you think about like, you hear a story of someone that's kind of relate, not even related to you, but near to the point where you're starting to question it and digging into it and sharing it. They have a hunch. They have, there's some feeling that they can't let go. And I think that's, I, I think that's enough to at least look at it, which you did. You brought the story here. And to me, it looks like, like it, I, everyone knows my opinion. I feel like this guy's currently getting away with this thing. I think it's very, very, very suspect. And the, the actions of which he took leading up to the event and shortly after just all are red flags. And that's what we do on the show. You listen to a couple episodes. We list stories. We give our opinion of things that are unknown and we list things that are red flags to help drive us down a direction. And one of those stories we are proven accurate about the, the little kid that went missing in Colorado. Like, oh, it, yeah. it, it, like it's and that's hunches. And then when you, when you hear, you know, police and other true crime podcasts, they talk about like, there's really not this huge conspiracy. Usually it's usually just the thing that makes sense. Like the biggest hunch. It's like, Hey, if this guy, you know, usually it's domestic violence. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, that's why I said like, I'm going on this path because this story has happened before guy meets another woman outside of marriage, falls in love. Woman convinces man to get rid of the wife. He does. They move on and get married almost shortly after Usually he gets caught. Sometimes they get away with it. That is a story that has played out multiple times over. This is following that track perfectly. <laughs> and what an opportunity, the pandemic of our lifetime, yeah. to take advantage of that. And I, what's, I think really screwed up for him is the fact that it was such an overreported health crisis and that there's no report of her getting it, and it was the beginning. If it was like now, we're like, people are kind of getting over it and like she died like oh yep there's another one like yeah like hundreds of thousands have gone since then globally we're not tracking as closely it worked but it was way too early for it to be just just swept on the rug or like oh she's coming home no she's not hospitals kept everybody there they kept people there and wouldn't allow you to go see them they weren't sending people home with COVID-19 in March of 2020 right and according to him that's what happened well in the evening Circling back to that, the timeline, you know, early CDC warnings were 14 days, like increasing from 14 days yes. on. So you to send someone home um, that could be contagious, you know, we don't know when she purportedly contracted COVID, but uh, the timeline's pretty tight in well, this the whole two, situation. Uh, the two uh, possibilities are, well, and she she's, spent posting, she's posting like crazy up until the day before then. Like, stay home, be safe, stay home, be like all like, like she's very deep into COVID world. And like, she's, she, her, the reason I saw the one article about the COVID coming to gig Harbor was her tweet from a couple days before the 19th saying COVID's come to gig Harbor. And here's the information. She was like on top of this tweeting constantly. Yeah. And then she contracts it or doesn't tweet that she has it. You think she would tweet it. She would have tweeted. She had it. Yeah. A hundred percent. Cause her last tweet's super innocuous. And then her Everything, her social media goes dark. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, his tweet, oh, she's got COVID. She's coming from the home from the hospital soon. No, she's not. Because we have lots of evidence of people on Twitter who've passed away from COVID. And they, people that are active on Twitter before COVID, and they'll tweet like, I, you know, got COVID. They and take then, selfies in the hospital. Yeah, they're Here's taking where I'm selfies at. selfies in the hospital. Right. They're kind of tweeting about their, you know, their progress. So that that is kind of a red flag to me now that I think about it, that she was very active on Twitter very active on reporting things about COVID, but was silent on herself getting COVID. Right. To the point where she had to go to the hospital. That doesn't seem to mix with kind of what she was doing. Yeah. March 16th, she retweeted a fun story about how uh, Chicago Aquarium closed due to coronavirus. So they let the penguins run around and check out the other exhibits. Like she's I, tweeting, I remember that. <laughs> but she's like tweeting fun stories. If she had COVID right. and was fearing for her life, she's not going to be retweeting a you know, news article about penguins running around the Chicago aquarium. That's the 16th. 
That's three days before she apparently had to be yeah. in the hospital with COVID. And you, you make a good point about tweeting, you know, what's going on with your symptoms of COVID. I mean, people were so, uh, I guess, obsessed is the right word with the uh, with the pandemic right away that yeah. it, months later, it was news to me when I would have a contact that had COVID, I'd call them, you know, how are you feeling? What are the symptoms like? What's yeah. going on? Um, and to be kind of active in that sphere, um, talking about COVID, publicly talking about COVID, and then, you know, no comments on I'm doing okay, or this is worse than what they're saying on the news. Uh, that yeah. sort of thing is, it's a gap, right? Yeah, no, it, uh, it you know, it, it, there's more questions than answers. <laughs> well, here, so I told you her last tweet on the 18th was a retweet. She does a lot of retweeting, but her last tweet that she wrote in a picture she shared was on the 17th. So two days before apparently she's hospitalized with COVID, but coming home. Yeah. Which is I, BS. She tweets a picture of her cat and she wrote, Doom Kitty is happy that the little humans are home from school for eight weeks and willing to take him outdoors. Hashtag quarantine cats. Like she doesn't have COVID. Or if she does, she doesn't know of it on March 17th. Or as she says, quarantine cats. Maybe that's reference to her being in quarantine. I, I Well, everyone was in quarantine. That's everyone true. was hashtagging quarantine. But yeah. she's outside taking pictures of her cats. And all she's doing is posting people like, this person's in the hospital. This is serious. This is serious. This, that's a person who's not going outside if they know they have COVID. She's going to the hospital. And yeah. she's not going to. So according to her husband, and only her husband, because there's no other any information to back this up, Two days later, she's in the hospital with COVID, but she's on her way home. Yeah, doesn't make sense. I don't think that's I I I, I that's a major hole in the story because the hospital would not release her if she just you know got diagnosed with COVID. Small town, no bed over, just no, nah, you just go home. It's fine. Yeah, early COVID, no way, absolutely no way that's happening. Absolutely disagree. And not only should she go home, she goes home, and then her first thing to do is just OD on pills and drive to a bridge and jump off of it. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, I, I'm like, they're going to have to, a lot of convincing to tell me that that didn't, that he isn't responsible for this and he did it to get his new wife. Well, I think, uh, I think we have some homework. To I do. really yeah. hope I'm wrong because that's terrible for those kids. I feel terrible for those oh, children dude. that they had to go through all this stuff. And then if that's the truth, like that's just awful. But yeah, any way it works out, I mean, you got to feel bad for the kids here, oh, right? Oh, yeah, like, no it's matter what. Super tough situation. They're um, so young, and that's yeah. that's their mom. Like, that's terrible. That's right. awful. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I I don't have any <laughs> theories other than I have no idea. You guys are both being. I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm not on the fence at all. <laughs> I, he's a, I, in my head now. Asterisk, no, whatever I have to say. This is my opinion that he is guilty of this. That's my opinion. I have nothing to back it up other than circumstantial evidence. Is that the right word, Mr. Lawyer? Uh, is yep. that what it is? Yep, <laughs> yep, absolutely. I want to make sure I'm using the terminology <laughs> properly. <laughs> uh, my, my whole uh, basis for the judicial system is based off law and order, so I don't know how accurate it is. <laughs> but I, if I was on the jury, I'd be like, yeah, he's guilty, 100%. Unless they, and uh, I, we, I want to do the homework because I want to find out if I'm wrong. I will be happily, I am, I'll be the first one to admit I'm wrong if there's some very detailed explanation yeah. as to why this wasn't a national news story, why she was going home with COVID from the hospital as one of the, like the first hundred people in the United States to get it. Like I'm going to withhold a uh, judgment on Eric, but if I was an investigator and he fled the country, this, I would, uh, even if I was like a private investigator hired by the family, I think I would have a lot of questions. <laughs> right. It, you think you would? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in our amateur look at this thing for like what an hour and thirty three minutes, uh, I have thousands of questions. Yeah. It's not even my job to find out this stuff. It'll be really interesting to see how the listeners uh, take this episode. Um, yeah, some, it's, it's not a national. Well, the putrid sound. <laughs> it happened near a national outdoor. But we usually thing. don't. We typically don't cover cases that are real recent, right? Because um, we've done it a few times and we get a lot of. A lot of flack <laughs> yeah, sometimes, but I uh, think this, I think this one deserves to be opened up. I think this needs to get bigger so that we can find out what's going on. Uh, because it's so if, as far as I'm concerned, someone's getting away with something very terrible and start the hashtag justice for Gwen. <laughs> I'm going to start that hashtag. 
No, I won't. I'll wait on that. I think <laughs> uh, I think we need to do our homework. Let's try and do this FOIA request, and we'll definitely do a follow up episode. You yeah. want to? Do you want to come back? Or, Absolutely, or, I would yeah. love to yeah. come back. And <laughs> you know, I, I just want to thank you guys because you do have a you know a wide audience here, and I think um, you know my opinion is the same as yours, Joe. That uh, there's questions here, and people can help answer them. And um, I think this is a step in the right you have direction. Half of my opinion. Half of the your other opinion. Half of my opinion. You're you're a good attorney. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for tuning into our show. We appreciate you all for listening and sharing locations unknown with your friends and family. Uh, be sure to like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we also have the YouTube channel going. You can subscribe to our show there as well as other look for other video content. Uh, if you'd like to sh- support the show uh, monetarily, you can visit the Facebook store or on the website. The website store is up, right, Mike? Uh, yes. Okay, so buy some cool swag, hats, uh, and you are leaving with a hat today. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, you can also donate to Patreon where not only are you helping support the show monthly or yearly, but you are uh, privy to exclusive Patreon content. And just remember when enjoying the beauty of nature, whether backpacking, camping, or just taking a walk, always remember to leave no trace. Thank you. And we will see you all next time. <laughs>